Why is Sergio Perez so good on street circuits? The numbers don't lie. All of Perez's wins for Red Bull have come on street tracks. Monaco, Singapore, Saudi Arabia, and now twice in Azerbaijan. In fact, the only win Perez has taken on a permanent circuit was his maiden victory for Racing Point in the chaotic 2020 Sakir Grand Prix. The numbers that support his street circuit prowess go further than just his win record too. Defining what can be called a street track is an inexact science, but the distinction we've made is to focus on the more conventional street circuits with walls in close proximity. Sometimes Melbourne and Montreal are called street tracks, but we've excluded them from this because their characteristics are closer to traditional circuits. We have included the former Russian GP at Sochi though. As well as his win record, 10 of Perez's 19 F1 podiums have come on street tracks. So that means 34% of his podiums are taken up on tracks that have comprised just 17% of his F1 career. He has a better record on street tracks compared to all of his teammates in F1, but really we need to focus on his record against Max Verstappen since he joined Red Bull at the start of 2021. That gives us a sample set of 11 events. Perez has won five of them, Verstappen four. In qualifying, including the Baku Sprint Shootout, Perez has beaten Verstappen seven times out of 12 in qualifying. Yet the only orthodox circuit he's ever outqualified him at was Imola in 2021. There are some caveats here. Verstappen would have likely outqualified Perez in Saudi Arabia this year, but for mechanical troubles, while well, he was set to demolish Perez's time in Singapore last year before aborting to the pits because he didn't have enough fuel. He was also on a lap that was quicker than Perez in Monaco last year when his teammate famously crashed. So Perez doesn't really have an advantage over Verstappen on street tracks, but he certainly compares much more favourably to the world champion on those types of circuit. So why is that? Street tracks are usually characterised by heavy braking zones and lots of tight corners. Jeddah is an exception to that, but Perez's style still works there too. Perez is generally a little more conservative with the way he loads up the car at corner entry. On more orthodox circuits, Verstappen's aggressive pivot of the car on entry, loading it up quickly, is a big advantage, provided you can live with what many drivers would feel is an unstable rear end. But on street tracks, Perez's approach pays off. It allows him to be precise under braking and on corner approach to achieve the right entry speed, giving himself some leeway to manipulate the car between the initial turn in and the apex to maximise the exit. He achieves that with his supreme sensitivity to rear tyre slip and throttle control to feed the power in. While he isn't massively early on the throttle, it's decisive and ensures he is wall grazingly accurate at corner exit. This is particularly beneficial at a track like Baku with its long straights following tight corners. It also works at a track like Jeddah which rewards precision on entry for the fast sweeping corners. Effectively, Perez gives away a fraction at corner entry, but gains much more mid-corner and particularly on exit. Regular tracks tend to be defined more by the initial turn-in phase, whereas street tracks shift that to a little later in the corner. The result is Perez is formidable on street tracks, and while it's perhaps a stretch to say he's F1's outright best street track racer, he's certainly among that leading group. As Red Bull team boss Christian Horner was quick to tell Verstappen over the radio after the chequered flag in Baku, Perez got a little lucky with the timing of the safety car, which came out just after Verstappen pitted from the lead. That meant Perez got the advantage of making his stop while the field was travelling slowly, allowing him and Charles Leclerc's Ferrari to rejoin ahead of Verstappen. Verstappen was philosophical afterwards. Not only did he accept that Red Bull had no way of knowing the safety car was about to be called, something we'll dig into a little more later, but when Perez mentioned Verstappen's bad luck as the top three drivers were watching highlights from the race in the cooldown room, Max immediately recalled that the same thing had happened to Perez in Jeddah last year. But sometimes you make your own luck, and this was the case for Perez in Baku. Because he was close to a match for Verstappen on pace, Perez was able to sit in DRS range of the race leader, forcing Verstappen to work harder to prevent him getting close enough to overtake. Perez was fine with that, he used the 0.3 second gain from DRS to take it easier on his tyres in some of the key corners around the lap, meaning he was able to keep his tyre temperatures under control while Verstappen's was spiralling. The harder Verstappen pushed to keep Perez out of range, the bigger the tyre offset became between them. As Verstappen complained about his tyres and the rears started to show the telltale signs of graining that indicate they had overheated, Perez was getting close enough to be able to make a pass with DRS. 
Verstappen later accepted he'd played the opening stint of the race wrong. Rather than taking it easy on the couple of laps between him passing pole sitter Leclerc and Perez getting through, Verstappen felt he should have pushed on to build a bigger gap. By focusing on trying to make his overall stint as fast as possible, rather than building a track position advantage that Perez would have found more difficult to recover, Verstappen left Perez with a lot less work to do to get into DRS range that proved so decisive in unravelling Verstappen's stint. That prompted Verstappen to be called into the pits, with the idea being that by coming in first, he would get the fresh tyre advantage and protect his lead. With the hard tyres being more durable than the mediums they were running at the start, there's every chance that Perez wouldn't enjoy the same sort of advantage during the long final stint of the race and Verstappen would secure the win. Then Perez got the luck he needed, but as we said earlier, it was luck earned by being quick enough to force Verstappen to burn his tyres up. Verstappen had just started the long, fast run from turn 16 to the start-finish straight when Nick de Vries' Alpha Tauri appeared on screen at the side of the track. By this point, Red Bull had already called Verstappen in, and in the few seconds it had between seeing de Vries off the track and Verstappen's arrival at the pit entry, it decided to commit to the stop rather than stay out in case a safety car was about to be called. Christian Horner explained Red Bull's logic after the race. The team noted that de Vries hadn't hit the wall in front of where he'd stopped and his engine was still running, so the assumption was he would reverse back onto the track and rejoin. What Red Bull hadn't spotted was that de Vries' left front wheel was pointing off to the left while his right front wheel was straight, so there was a sign of damage that went unspotted in the short amount of time Red Bull had to make its decision. F1 teams also have people monitoring the available onboards of all the cars to watch for this sort of thing, but even with that in mind, Red Bull had just a handful of seconds to make a decision, and it's unlikely whoever was monitoring the onboard in question had a direct link to the pit wall. So even if the damage was spotted immediately, then by the time it would have travelled up the chain of command, it would have probably been too late to change Verstappen's strategy anyway. And besides, even de Vries' own team hadn't noticed what had happened at first. The rookie was told to reverse and rejoin the race by the Alpha Tauri pit wall, who only became aware of the damage once he told them the car was broken. As the chaser after the restart, Verstappen wasn't able to repeat what Perez did to him because of three factors. Firstly, Perez's special knack around this circuit, secondly, the fact that the hard tyres were more robust, and finally, because Verstappen wasn't fully comfortable with his car. He spent the entire race making adjustments in the cockpit to try to get more confidence in the front end on corner entry, and he believed he made a breakthrough late in the race. It was too late to do anything about Perez on the day, but it might explain some of Verstappen's confidence about the impending title fight. While Perez says that without his problems in Melbourne, he'd now be leading the championship, Verstappen seemed relaxed about the idea of a close title fight developing across the whole season. That might be because he knows two of Perez's best tracks have appeared in the first four races, or it could be because the breakthrough Verstappen talked of late in the race means he now feels he can have Perez covered on the remaining street tracks. Verstappen said the key to the season will be consistency, and you could interpret that as a suggestion that on more conventional tracks, he'll be more capable of achieving that consistency than Perez. And as Horner pointed out, while Perez has excelled on street tracks for Red Bull, he needs to start doing it on the proper tracks as well. There's an eight-race run between Monaco at the end of May and Singapore in mid-September. Perez's performances on those tracks will be what determines if we really are going to have a title fight in 2023.